Hi fellow artists, my name is Lauren and I am the artist behind Potato Art Studios. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how I drew and colored this meerkat with soft pastels and pastel pencils. If you're interested in seeing the process behind how I drew this picture, just keep on watching. So during this video, if you find it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. So to start off, I usually don't include the sketching process behind my drawings um, just because I think it's a little bit boring. But if you enjoy watching this segment or you find that it's helpful to see me sketch out the drawing first, please comment down below so that I'll know and I'll remember to record the sketching process in future videos. But while I'm doing my base sketch, I typically use the Prismacolor Cool Erase Pencils. And if you haven't seen my how to transfer your drawing using the grid method, I'll have a card pop up and also have it linked down below in the description box so you can check that out. So when I'm sketching, I like to use two different colors of pencils. I have my one inch grid marks with white and I also have my sketch or my main subject in white. And for the quarter inch grids, I like to use a different color. So that's the red marks that you see on the paper. And just so that it's not an overwhelming number of just white lines so the red kind of helps differentiate the quarter inch from the one inch marks. And I only use the quarter inch marks for the areas where I know that I want to have my drawing very very accurate. So for erasing I think a kneaded eraser is much better with than using just a normal plastic eraser and that was the gray ball you saw me kind of rubbing over the one inch white grid marks earlier. And for the background, I am using only soft pastels and I can be super messy with the background because the soft pastels blend very easily with any kind of sponge tip. So I'm using a combination of a eyeshadow applicator and also a soft tool to blend the larger surfaces. The soft tool is, is spelled S-O-F-F-T and I'll have a link to that tool down below in the description box. So I just made a video on tips um, for using pastels last weekend. So if you haven't checked that video out, I'll also have it linked down below and have a card pop up here if you'd like to see that. So when I'm drawing pastels, I like to have my background in first because that allows me to get a kind of, of a feel of the setting for my drawing. And I don't need my background to be 100% complete. I just need it to have it loosely filled in so I have an, a general idea of how I want to approach my main subject, which is the meerkat in this case. So for the meerkat, I start by blocking in colors and you can see that the meerkat is pretty small relative to the size of my pastel sticks, um, but I can still use the past soft pastel sticks to lay down some of the larger areas of color. Um, but you can see as I shift my attention to smaller areas, I do need to switch and trade my soft pastel sticks for pastel pencils, which are the pa pencils that you see here. They look basically like exactly the same as colored pencils, but they have a pastel core instead of a colored pencil core. So in this stage of the drawing, I mainly want to kind of cover that background color, which is the paper color because although my meerkat is a brown color, it's not exactly the color of the paper. So when you're working with a more subtle toned paper, like a light gray or a tan, you can kind of leave some of the paper color showing. 
but because my paper that I'm using, it's the background paper color is quite strong and a little bit overpowering in this case, I want to make sure that in the early stages, I cover up the paper color if I don't want it to show. So for the first couple hours in the drawing, I'm not concerned about doing details. I am just trying to draw the base colors of the meerkat. And when I refer to base color, I'm talking about the main color of your animal or your person or whatever subject you're drawing. So my meerkat has a lot of colors. Um, if you take a look at the reference picture in the upper left hand corner, it, its fur does have a lot of highlights where the individual hairs of the meerkat sticks out of its body a little bit more and those hairs catch the sunlight and reflect that light. Um, when, I'm walk when I'm first working, I'm not trying to draw those individual hairs right now. All I'm trying to do is identify the actual coat of the meerkat. And when I look at the reference picture, I determined that it was a warm brown or a more reddish brown color. So all I wanna do is make sure I get that brown tone in the body of the meerkat. And you'll see later on in the video, I'll eventually work in the finer details. Um, but early on, you really don't need to worry about drawing individual hairs or details. And I think it's important when you're working with pastels to find the base color first. Um, I learned that the hard way because in my last pastel drawing where I drew two goldfish, I was in the final hour of drawing my goldfish and I realized that my goldfish were a lot darker than I wanted them to be and that's because I was working with a dark paper and the paper color was showing too much through the goldfish um, so they looked a lot more dark and gloomy than I wanted them to look and that was my own fault for allowing the paper color to show too much in my subjects. So if you're working on any sort of colored background paper, it's better to cover your paper color early on than when you're working in the final detail stage. And as we're working on the details on the meerkat's face and neck, I'm making sure that I'm kind of blending as I go because I can still see that paper color showing through um, on the meerkat's face, there's kind of like a halo effect around its ears and the sides of its face where I haven't covered that area up. So I'll need to either widen the meerkat's ears a little bit or have the background move in to cover the paper color. Um, because right now it looks kind of strange with a kind of a light brown outline around my subject, which is what I don't want. So as we're continuing down the body of the meerkat, I'm doing two separate things. I'm alternating between doing the highlights and the shadows on the meerkat's coat. And so while I'm working I'm on the details, I used my electric pencil sharpener to sharpen my Faber-Castell Pitt pastel pencils and my Stabilo Carb Othello pastel pencils. Sorry, I'm probably butchering the pronunciation on those. Um, but both of those pencils sharpen really well with my electric pencil sharpener. And I have the Boss Stitch Quiet Sharp 6, which I purchased off of Amazon. And I'll leave a link to that sharpener down below in the description box. But I was under the impression for a very long time that you should not use an electric pencil sharpener to sharpen your pastel pencils. And I think it was watching a few YouTube videos that told me you should never sharpen them with an electric pencil sharpener. So for some reason, I just never tried it. And because I was afraid the pastel core would shatter and it's true that pastel pencils are a bit more fragile than your normal colored pencils, but 
with the pencils that I had, they sharpen just fine. Um, so if you are afraid of shattering your pastel pencils, um, I would recommend the one that I have because I have not had that issue at all. And that's, that was sort of a sidetracked, but going back to the Meerkat's coat, you can see that after I established the base colors, I do have a lot more work to do. Um, fur always has a lot of texture, so you need to put a lot of stroke variations in order for it to look realistic. I think it's important to be able to visualize the shape of just the body of the subject you're drawing underneath that fur. And if you can do that, um, it's very easy to imagine how the hair strands lie on top of each other and stick out of the body. Because if you try to make the hair strokes too much in parallel with each other, they tend to look a little bit fake. Um, so if you kind of imagine a like a stuffed animal whose fur was made with um, like a synthetic fur material. Um, the stuffed animal doesn't look realistic because the fur lays too flat. So when you're drawing animals and I think when you're trying to draw wild animals like meerkats or lions or tigers, um, the you need to add a element of texture and extra roughness to them so they look more real, basically when their fur looks a little bit more messy. And while I was working, I felt like I did not have nearly enough colors to make the drawing the way I wanted to. Um, I think I only had about 30 different colors of pastel pencils with me. Um, I just invested in a small amount because I'm just starting out. Um, so I definitely wish I had more colors that I, than I actually had. But if you're a beginner like me and you, you, you know, you want to have all 120 colors, but you know, it's not always possible to have the whole set. Um, you can still finish your project and you can do that because you can prioritize color value instead of color hue. So when I talk about color value, I'm talking about how light or dark that color is. So if you were to put a grayscale filter over your drawing, I'm talking about the areas a dark value has a dark would show up basically more towards black, a light value would show basically a more on the white end and so if you prioritize the value of the color more than the hue which is how you would describe a color being red orange yellow green blue purple you can use colors that are similar in value but a slightly different hue so for example, I don't have the right red that I want. So instead of worrying that I don't have the right red, I'm not going to be able to finish this, I should just quit. Instead of thinking that, figure out, okay, I don't have the right red, but I have an orange that is has the value that I want, so it's not the correct hue, but it's the correct value. So I could still use a similar color to achieve similar results. So it doesn't have to be 100% accurate, um, but if you have close values to your reference picture, it will still look good. Um, so I think in my case, because I had fewer colors, it actually made my meerkat more colorful because I had to make lots of adjustments along the way um, that I probably wouldn't have needed to make if I did have all 100 colors in a full set. Um, and I think that was a good thing because I think my meerkat turned out a little bit more interesting. I'm using the same pastel paper that I used in my jellyfish drawing and 
I think it's a very interesting paper to use because it can take a lot of layers of pastel without generating a lot of pastel dust and I know that's one of the main complaints with pastel artists. I try to treat this pastel drawing kind of similar to how I would approach a digital drawing. So I think of the paper color as the first layer in my digital drawing and the second layer would be the base layer where we spent the first hour to just trying to cover the background color with pastel and the third layer and onwards are basically the detail layers where you're focusing on building texture so where i want right now we're working on probably layer four of the drawing and where i want the highlights of the meerkat to really stand out i am going to go over those areas with the white pastel pencil first and then if I need to I'll go over the white with either a pink or a yellow to color the highlights so it matches my reference picture and if I were to only go in with a lighter color on top of the darker areas it would turn pretty muddy because the brown in the meerkat's body would be the dominant color of the two colors. Um, so putting the white details is kind of like I'm masking that area first and creating a barrier between the base color of the meerkat which is that dark brown and so anything I put on top of the white will show better than if I were to just go in with a, a pink or a light yellow. So when I start a project, I try to have a few goals in mind with what I want to achieve in that drawing. And my main goal for this project was not to draw the meerkat in a photorealistic way. Um, I know that sounds kind of strange, but my personal goal when I started this was to just figure out how to work with fur texture and to see if the techniques that I used with color pencils could be applied with pastel pencils. And I think having a background working with colored pencils definitely helped me with this drawing. Um, but pastel pencils do behave quite differently and so this whole drawing I was just basically exploring kind of the nuances of how pastel pencils layer and blend and trying to figure out some blending techniques that worked. So to give you a background, my very first pastel drawing was a jellyfish which I had uploaded here and I'll also linked down below and I think that was a very good first project because I had a lot of freedom to deviate from my reference pictures because jellyfishes are basically blobs with some strings attached to them, which are the tentacles, and it doesn't matter too much if your jellyfish looks exactly like your reference picture. Um, the second project I did with pastels were two goldfish, and goldfish have a little bit more detail than jellyfish because they do have some facial features. They have some some eyes and a tiny mouth and a few scales so they're a little bit more complex um, but jumping from doing fish to a furry subject like a meerkat was actually a pretty big jump um, and I knew that so I didn't want to put a lot of pressure on myself to make my meerkat photo realistic. Um, my whole attitude towards this drawing from the very beginning was just to experiment and play around and figure out what I could learn from my first attempt at drawing fur. And you'll see that when I worked on the face I'm not trying to draw every single detail photo realistically. I'm just trying to figure out how to work with pastel pencils um, because they do behave very differently from colored pencils 
and see if I can get the overall effect that I'm looking for. And so this is the finished meerkat drawing. And I am proud that I finished this drawing. Um, I am sure there are going to be a lot of areas I'm going to look back on and want to improve at a later date. Um, but I am happy that I finished it. And I'm glad that you were able to go through this journey with me. Um, if you found this video helpful, again, please give it a thumbs up so that that would tell YouTube to recommend this video to other people. If you're not following me on Instagram, I do have my Instagram handle on the screen and I'll also link it down below. I post a poll once a week on my Instagram stories where I ask my followers what subject they would like to see me draw next. And this meerkat was the winner of last week's poll. If you'd like to see more videos like this, I do have a drawing time lapse playlist, which I will link down below. Um, if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future, uh, make sure that you subscribe. And so you'll be notified when I upload new content. I try to upload a new drawing time lapse every Tuesday, which is why I call it a time lapse Tuesday. I also occasionally post bonus videos on the weekends where I just have general art tips. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in watching, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification icon. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you in my next video.